is Mike McDonald. I work at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C. And there I do basic research into a number of different plasma systems, uh, mainly looking at spacecraft technology development for small satellites, uh, focusing a lot on hollow cathodes for Hall and ion thrusters. To most people, when we think about spacecraft propulsion, you think about a big rocket going up into the sky, you know, a towering pillar of fire. And that's what we call chemical propulsion. Now, chemical energy is great. It took us to the moon, but it's only gonna get us so far because there's only so much you can put into a chemical bond. Put more energy in and more energy in, and then we call that a bomb, and it is not a happy day and you're not going to space anymore. What we instead can do with plasma propulsion is say, let's divorce chemistry uh, from propulsive efficiency. Maybe we can take some much more boring molecule rip it apart into charged species, you know, so now I can affect it with electric and magnetic fields, you end up with a propellant that you can shoot out much faster. And that turns out to be a far more mass efficient way to achieve a given amount of acceleration. The only catch is that it takes power. Space shuttle main engine would give off like six gigawatts of power. Hoover Dam is, you know, like two gigawatts. When I would test on the Hall thruster that I did my thesis on, it was six kilowatts, you know, a million times smaller. It was like a like hundred light bulbs, you know, wired up together. We got all that extra efficiency, but we lost it in the amount of total thrust. Electric propulsion, incredibly fuel efficient, but ultimately it's what we use once we're already up in space because it's so hard to get enough power to give you enough that you would ever get off the ground. When you think about an electric propulsion system, uh, you should think about it first from the electric side. It is an electric circuit at its heart. Just like a battery, you're gonna have an anode and a cathode, a high end and a low end. And when we make thrust, it's the anode where the ions are coming from that we care about for the thrust. But if you only push out one species, your spacecraft's gonna charge up. No, not a good day. You're gonna wanna balance that by spitting out some electrons. That's gonna come from your cathode, your negative electrode. And finally, we'd like to shape the way they come out so they're in a nice collimated beam. And the way we typically do that is with magnetic fields. So there's often gonna be a big piece we call the magnetic circuit, where we shape the fields to let us push out those ions the way that we want to, to make the thrust. What I think is really exciting is that over the past 10, five really years, you've seen Hall thrusters become the dominant propulsion technology used across commercial constellations. And what those thrusters are doing is they're letting these companies put all of these satellites for their constellation into a relatively low Earth orbit. And then they can turn on their Hall thrusters and ride the Hall thruster with a fuel efficient propulsion up to what their final orbit's going to be throughout the rest of their life up there. We probably now have literally thousands of Hall thrusters forming a ubiquitous plasma propulsion uh, application all over Earth orbit. I remember, you know, as an undergrad engineer, starting to realize that everything you looked at, there was whole nother levels of detail underneath. And realizing how much there was left to know, you know, kind of pushed me to grad school, wanting to get at least a little bit farther. It also made me really appreciate all those people who'd come before and solved all these problems for us. And to me, that's, you know, scientist or engineer, that, that's what you're doing, is you're trying to solve problems and ideally tell everyone else what you found. Mm -hmm.